it's a brief introduction on the customer maintenance screen in Vision Commerce. As you can see, I've already got Vision Customer open with some information in. You can actually open this form by simply going to the right hand side navigation and selecting Customer, or if you're adding a new customer, go into the Sales tab at the top and then select the Add Customer option. Once you have the customer open, obviously if it's a new customer there's nothing filled in any of the fields so what we're going to do is just run through the fields what they're for the fairly obvious fields i'll just leave out the ones where there's options i'll try and explain those options to you so in the top of the screen we have the account code that has to be unique you can only ever have that once on the system and then it's a client off the company name you can have multiple companies trading under the same vision commerce system that means that invoices are produced with different names standard addressing and at the bottom section here we've got the status of the customer they can either be a prospect they can be an archive or they can be live if at any point you try and place an order for an archive or a prospect customer it will then ask you if you want to switch the customer back to live in the center we've got the legal types for the gdpr options because this is a business, there's no GDPR option currently. However, if you set this to an individual, you then have the ability to mark this customer as anonymous or forgotten. You can only mark a customer forgotten if you've ceased trading with them. Middle section at the top here, the VAT code, S for standard VAT code. Any of these boxes that are this sort of pink color, you can hit the F11 or the F12 button and it will then do a lookup. You can then select the one that you want. VAT registration number, standard VAT registration number, only the number, not the country code. The currency that you trade in is the next field down. So for this account, we're trading in pound sterling. And beneath that are up to three bank accounts that can be placed on the invoice when we send it to the customer. So if you have multiple accounts and you're quite happy for them to pay into any of those accounts, you can place more than one account onto the sales invoice. And beneath that, it shows the price list that this customer will use and any additional discount over and beyond any prices that you obtain. When you're entering an order, we obviously use the pricing matrix of customers' own prices, promotional, price list, price list, and then product pricing and underneath that section there we have the group account this is used so that you can have multiple vision customers on the system all posting to the same financial group account so if you have a group of restaurants with a head office you simply can have the head office as the group account all the invoices will post directly to the restaurants however Everything will go into one single account in the finance system and then you can have centralized payments from those customers. And on the right, these are options that are filled in f that will help you when you're doing sales orders. At the top, we have the duty and the customs duty. So it's excise duty, custom duty accounts, which ones are going to be used. In general, if you're using your own account, you will have your own account code in there. If you're charging the duty to an alternative account, then you'll have the code for that alternative account. Underneath the carrier, if there's a default carrier that's used for the customer, then that can be filled in. Of course, these can be changed at the sales order time and at the allocation time just before it goes to the warehouse much the same as the delivery times again these are standard if there are no set times then leave these empty a 9 to 5 30 is actually any time during the day and most businesses and delivery companies don't want you to quote a time if it's really that wide ranging a time underneath warehouse delivery service standard delivery service only use this if your warehouse tell you to use it or if you're using a parcel carrier where you're using different service codes and then we've got delivery instructions and pick instructions pick instructions are sent to the warehouse generally do not go to the customer and do not get printed on the delivery note under the second tab we have the analysis um, this one's fairly simple. On the left-hand side here, we link to the finance system. 
and in this case this is linked to sage so if i hit get sage data it will then go away to the finance system and then drag the data into here and it shows you whether the account's frozen if there's any issues the spending of the last year and the account balance our center section contains all the analysis this analysis is fairly important the two that are vital to everything on the system are the account manager and the type however we do have reports that run for outlets and areas and sources all within the business intelligence part of the system so these are very important if they're filled in then you can ask for simple reports like a, an account manager report or a type of account report or an outlet report and you'll be able to see that information on right hand side memo area and below that this is the information about printing invoices do you want an invoice to be sent to the customer so you might not require it generated but it will still post it but not actually send it this is generally used for web customers where the website will send them the copy of the invoice by email and when the order comes in we don't really want to send them a duplicate copy you can send emails to multiple contacts if you wish to do that then tick the use contact list and then in the contact list select which contacts will receive the sales orders however this is not ticked in this example therefore everything will go to the standard export option email below in contacts information here is limited to 32,000 contacts however that should be more than enough and the information stored against the customer is general details really it's its name address and email address these days that everybody wants and you can also put a customer onto a specific mailing list as well so whilst we have the marketing tool that can generate extracts for MailChimp and you can specify I want to see this mailing list you can also be very generic and say I want any customer in England who is for this sales account manager who has bought in the last six months and is buying red wine from Switzerland those are the customers I want to extract and then it will just give you those lists of customers which you can then load into MailChimp or another program a similar program delivery addresses you can add as many as you want into here again a limits quite large it's about 32,000 again so you'll never run short and you can have multiple delivery addresses we have a couple here where there's a stores entrance which might be used and below that we've got an underbond warehouse address that may be used the information that we store against these is very generic compared to the, the standard customer address underneath web and reserves if you're storing goods for your customer um, such as you're storing wine in paid reserves you can charge the customer storage charges and we charge per bottle which is very similar to how many of the warehouses charge uh, and it's per bottle per month um, this way that a customer then feels that if they take the bottle out they then are not paying for it and you can choose whether to give credits or not uh, on the left side we have this ability to do trading customer reserves where it provides you with the ability that your customer can say I want to sell this stock uh, you can then trade that stock and you can earn a commission on the sale of that in the reserve stock it will actually show you what stock is stored for the customer as you can see this example customer here has um, 2400 bottles or 200 cases of Chablis that's stored and these are unpaid reserves so if I was to place an order for this product it would ask me do I want to reduce the unpaid reserves for this customer so that it will gradually reduce it down to zero it all depends on what you want to do with the reserves you use it one way or the other for paid reserves you can see there is some uh, Barola red in stock there's three cases and we can see the market value um, for that product at the moment and if the customer was trading the stock this would be ticked in the trade box and 
the minimum underbond cases sales value you would enter the value in there that the customer wants to get as a minimum for the sale of this stock there are also some additional reports in here as well reserve stock values reserve stock update market values update bids for some of these features you do need the optional livex plugin contract pricing as you can see here this customer has some high value products or high volume products um, that they sell and what we've done is we've given him specific pricing for his high volume products and underneath sales orders just a general listing of sales orders again we'll only display those that are outstanding at the moment unless you tick the box in the top right display all orders uh, and similarly transactions we get to see a list of all the transactions the customer has and this has come from the finance system if you use the finance system correctly where you have an invoice and then a payment and you allocate the payment against the invoice there won't be anything that appears on this list in the outstanding list and you see this that when i open the display all transactions i get quite a lot more and these are all reconciled transactions so apart from the sales analysis at the bottom which when i open it i can get a default period and it shows me what this customer has been buying uh, this is kind of the overview for the customer maintenance so hopefully that explains what you have to do and uh, what you have to fill in all the fields.